The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Steven Zeiss. I'm with TowerCoverage.com, brought to you by Link Technologies Incorporated. Uh, welcome, everybody, to the Tower Coverage Basics webinar. Uh, we'll be cover covering uh, how to use your Tower Coverage account, um, how to use some of the some of the features, going over newer features, uh, more detail than uh, than the the older ones. But we'll we'll try and touch base on everything. Uh, if you have any questions throughout the uh, the webinar. Uh, please feel free to submit a question. Uh, I'll try to answer them uh, as, as quickly as I poss possibly can, and also we'll cover them at the at the end as well. Uh, so that that way everybody can, if there's any questions that uh, you know somebody asked that, that we didn't go over, that you can hear those answers as well. Uh, we will be recording this for uh, later on viewing purposes. So if you if you need to, you can view the view the webinar from our wiki later on as well. Uh, so we'll get started. Uh, if you can't think of any questions or anything during the webinar, uh, there is you can contact us at support at towercoverage.com or you can give us a call 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Uh, Central Time, Monday through Friday. Uh, we'd be happy to help you. Um, so without much any more delay here, uh, what is towercoverage.com? It is an RF propagation website that allows you to... Sorry about that. Uh, allows you to to generate coverage maps uh, based on the settings of your access points, uh, so that way you can see the areas that you can cover. You can get a signal uh, signal from specific locations. You can integrate into your website, uh, collect end user data. Uh, it's a very very powerful tool. Uh, it, it will also allow you to integrate with your CRM. Uh, we integrate with with many different CRMs. Uh, the we have a lot of documentation on it. If it's uh, you don't find it in the list, um, the documentation will help your CRM uh, integrate with Tower Coverage, so that way your end user data and your web integration uh, pushes to your your billing system as well. So it's a very powerful tool. Once you have a Tower Coverage account uh, created, uh, you can subscribe now with uh, with PayPal or with a credit card now. So uh, either either way you want to go, uh, we we've added that in there. So that's one of the newer things that is available. Uh, the tier that you need to be on is determined by uh, several different things. There's a lot of different features uh, depending on what tier you are. Uh, determines the tier, uh, the features that you have available, but it also determines the amount of coverage maps that that are available on your account as well as API calls. So the if you have, uh, you're going to need a coverage per per access point. So uh, you'll just have to figure out how many how many you need. Uh, and you you can you can upgrade it at any time. You can start with a tier one and you can upgrade it as you fill it up. Uh, so it's totally up to you. There's there's no contract on it, on it or anything. So makes it very very simple. Once you have your tower coverage account uh, created, uh, you'll want to log into your account and you want to go in and check and make sure everything is set up correctly. Uh, the company profile is going to be pre-filled with, with the information from the registration page, but you do want to make sure that it is up to date. Uh, and the reason for this is because this is, if you have public maps displayed, uh, so once your tower coverage account is built, you can set one of your multi maps uh, up to three maps to be on our public multi map. Uh, the public multi map allows end users, even if they don't know you exist, if they find towercoverage.com, they can uh, uh, fill out the uh, find a provider form, and if they fall within 50 miles of, of your coverage area, we're going to let you know that there's somebody in your area looking for coverage and they don't know about you. Uh, so you're going to get those results. Uh, so you want to make sure that this data is accurate because the pin that shows up on the public map, uh, the contact information that they see on that pin is going to be the information from your company profile. Uh, not your first name and last name, uh, of course, uh, but your business, uh, where your business is located, your website, uh, and your phone number will display there. 
once you have your account all set up, you're going to want to add in uh, your different users. Uh, you can have up to two additional admin users. Uh, so the, the nice thing about this is, is the first account created is going to be the master account. It'll always be the master account. Uh, you can add two more admins, uh, and then you can add as many input or read-only users as you like. Uh, when adding the admin accounts, make sure that it is somebody that you want to have full access to your account. Uh, an admin can, can change your subscription. They can change uh, your billing details, your uh, billing push API uh, credentials. They can utilize your API, uh, use up your API calls, uh, so on and so forth. So make sure it's somebody that you want to have the, those kind of rights. And they can also delete your maps. Uh, so make sure you uh, you want them to have that. Otherwise, you can make them an input user. Uh, an input user can create maps. Uh, they they can do path run path analysis. They can uh, input end user data and stuff into your account uh, with no problem. But they cannot delete anything and they cannot change your account settings. And then you have the read only user. And the only thing that they can do is exactly what it says. They can only view your maps. Uh, they can only see the statistics. Uh, they they cannot change anything and they cannot uh, input any anything or uh, delete anything from your account so that that's a good safe way to go uh, for you know just a sales rep or something like that once you have all your users in <clears throat> excuse me uh, you can upload a logo into your account uh, you make sure uh, that this the logo is less than a meg but it can be a uh, PNG or or a JPEG uh, what this does is on whenever you create point-to-point -point links if you go to print that link uh, instead of it just being blank, it'll have your logo at the top of that link. So that way you can, uh, you know, if you're if you're doing a project or doing a quote for a customer, you can create that point to point link, print it out from your tower coverage account and take that with you. So that way they have a visual rep representation that you can show them. Hey, I can do this link. See, I have the paper for you. Uh, it's just a little added added bonus for your account. Uh, in your EUS settings, uh, this is where you uh, adjust the, the, the iframe of the website integration, and we will get a little bit more into detail later on, but just so you know, this is where you adjust those settings. Uh, you can change uh, uh, the landing. Uh, basically, a after they fill out the form, it, it just kind of how the iframe responds at the end of it. Uh, whether you want them to see your cover ma coverage map, uh, if you want them to just get a thanks message, or if you want to redirect them to a different page on your website, whatever you choose to do. You can also change the message URL. Uh, keep in mind, you cannot have return characters. It can only be just a one paragraph short little message. Uh, it does have to fit inside an in info box on a map. Uh, so keep it short and sweet. Uh, we have a default one in there that generally works pretty good for most anybody, but if you want to change the language or anything like that, you're more than welcome to do so. Uh, same thing with the movable pin text uh, and you can also add up to five email uh, additional email recipients of your end user submission data uh, you can actually even put um, dist distribution groups in this as well uh, your default settings if you turn this on uh, you can set your country and your state uh, of where uh, the on the EUS iframe, uh, there's a country drop down and a state drop down, and you can set those by selecting the default settings and setting those in your account. Your weekly EUS submission report uh, and is uh, all the EUS submissions that have come in in the last week and the email address that you want it sent to. Google Analytics will allow you to see the statistics of how many people use your iframe. And then over here, the EUS iframe text also allows you to change the, the actual text on the iframe. Uh, if you want to change something on there, you do have to fill in all the all the form all the fields. Excuse me. Um, even if it is the same thing, uh, so if you just want to change the language, this does not change uh, what the value of the of the field is. So if you change the where did you where did you hear about us? If you change that text to to something else, it's still going to have the same contents in that drop down menu on the where did you hear about us, uh, and it, it is still required on the form. Uh, you cannot change that. Uh, so keep that in mind whenever you're changing what the what these fields actually say. Uh, if you want a, a little more fe flexibility or a lot more actually, you can also utilize the API version of the EUS submission form. So the nice thing about that is that you can customize the the fields, you can customize the contents of the fields. They will still be saved in the same place in the tower coverage account. Uh, but if you uh, if you know what you changed them to, then then that makes it very simple inside your tower coverage account. Uh, the street address and stuff that stuff is uh, is required depending on how detailed you get with your with your API. Uh, you want to make sure that um, when you're changing that stuff, you don't 
break the uh, the actual uh, value that's being sent, but it makes it very customizable. Uh, you can change the way it looks using the API. Uh, you can change the the contents, the you know the user experience altogether, uh, and it's very easy to do that just by going to your account settings. And we do have a template uh, that that can get you started uh, in the API section. Here's your your account ID and here's your key. And the EUS API template generator will get you started on creating uh, a custom website integration form. Uh, but keep in mind, you do have to keep get your own Google Map key. Uh, the iframe, you do not have to have a Google Map key uh, due to it is on our server, so you get to use ours. Uh, you can't use our key if it's on your, your server. So it's very simple. Google Map keys are completely free. Uh, up to 2,500 API calls per day for a Google Map key. So the chances of you, you exceeding it and having to purchase, you know, calls from the Google Map is very slim. Uh, so it's it's very simple to do. But when you do that, when you go get that key, you want to make sure that you have uh, jo Map JavaScripts and geocoding enabled on the key. So that way your key will work uh, for geocoding uh, with this API uh, EUS template generator. Once you have uh, that, that stuff set up, all your languages are all adjusted, you'll want to go in and you'll want to make sure that your land cover settings are accurate for your, for your area. Uh, you'll want to come in here and make sure that, that you set your densities appropriately, your heights appropriately. So that, as you can see, each, each of these are identified uh, with different colors. And you'll be able to see those on a coverage map as well uh, by viewing the land cover data. Uh, so all of these colors actually mean something very important uh, because the, uh, the, the clutter data is actually assigned in approximately 30 by 30 meter by 30 meter squares. So they, it, the satellites flew over, determined what was there, and assigned a specific type of, of clutter. Those are different depending on where you're at in the world. Uh, so if you're in a spot where there's redwoods, you're going to want to adjust and compensate for that because those redwood trees are very, very, very tall. If you're out in the middle of Arizona and you, uh, the, you know, the, the rainfall is very low, your trees are smaller, they're less dense, you're going to want to compensate for that uh, just the same. Uh, the height is in meters. You want to make sure you keep that in mind. And the density is a 0 to 10,000 value. Uh, so it, if you're wanting to... If you're wanting to make sure that your trees are really dense and it, it's pretty much all line of sight type stuff, you can turn your, your density values, you know, five, six thousand, um, you know, or you can just do a max if you like. Um, or if you want to, to be, you know, le less conservative about it, you, you can leave them at the default values. The, these default values are actually like very low for pretty much anywhere. Um, so you, you're going to want to adjust them, uh, and the best way to do uh, to adjust these would be to create one coverage that you have a bunch of, of customers off of, and look and see what their actual signal readings are. Create that coverage and go in there and do a path analysis from that coverage and t test those different locations and see what the projection is uh, with the with the current values. And if tower coverage is projecting them, uh, projecting them. Uh, hotter signals than what you're actually seeing, then you can come in here and you can turn your your land cover settings up uh, to so that way when the coverage or the path analysis happens, it's actually uh, factoring more forest loss uh, for for that situ for those situations. So you, that's the best way to adjust them is by using a couple real data points. Uh, that way you can get more accuracy. Uh, the two down here at the bottom uh, are are some key factors as well. Uh, in your area, uh, it is totally, totally different uh, depending on where you're at. Urban build up low and urban build up high. Excuse me. Uh, so the urban build up low, uh, basically, what the when the land cover was was generated, depending on the footprint of, of what the satellite seen, if it has a large uh, geographic footprint, it usually assigns it as urban build up high, even if it's not that hot, not actually a high high building it, it usually goes off the footprint of the building though and then the, all the all of your smaller buildings your houses and stuff like that usually get assigned with an ur urban build up low uh, but keep in mind whenever you're setting these uh, if your average small uh, building you know it is not eight meters tall or ten meters tall or whatever whatever you have it set to you want to make sure that you compensate accordingly for the average building height the average small and the average big buildings in your area 
whenever you're setting these. Uh, you can create multiple if you have uh, if your network is spread all the way all the way across uh, the country. Uh, you can make multiple land cover settings very simply. You can click the Add New, uh, give it a name, uh, and you can uh, you can assign you know different land cover to different regions as well. Uh, or if you want to create one that is a 50% land cover setting or 100% land cover, so on and so forth, uh, it allows you to to uh, assign a specific land cover to one or multiple coverages, but then use a different land cover setting on on other coverages. Uh, it, it just a little more flexibility with the land cover is, is what that allows you to do. And you can change these as you want. Uh, the standard one, uh, you can't remove it. You can remove any of the ones that you create, but the standard one will always stay there. Uh, but as you can see, we have a 50% one in here. I didn't actually ad adjust all of the settings, but uh, some of them I turn, turned up to the 5,000. Um, but the, I didn't change any of the heights, but all the, all the density, densities are set to 5,000, so that, that way it, it uses 50% uh, density on the land cover settings. Once you have your land cover all adjusted, uh, if you want to add overlays into your account, you can do so by going to the overlay management. Uh, they do have to be KML or KMZ format. Um, make sure you don't have any spaces or char special characters in the name, uh, and they are less than three meg in size. Uh, there's nothing we can do about that. The, if they're bigger than three meg, uh, Google Maps on, in a browser will not uh, allow us to display them. Uh, but you can break them up and display as many as you want at once. They just got to be each individual one has to be smaller than three meg. Uh, if you're pulling a uh, an overlay from Google Earth uh, when doing so, they're not all of the features of a Google Earth overlay will will translate in, on a Google map uh, just simply because uh, Google Maps will not allow uh, animate as many animations and like bouncing pins and stuff like that and that's just a, a restriction because it's a browser based instead of a, a, a program on your computer uh, if you have antenna patterns we have many antenna patterns available in tower coverage already uh, but if you do not see the antenna that you wish to use, uh, it is very simple uh, to contact the manufacturer of the antenna that you're using. And you can ask them for the radio mobile compatible .ant file of your antenna that you wish to use. Uh, the, the key to that is, is when you, if you open up those ANT files, you'll see that they have 720 rows of data. And it's just a single row of data of, of gain readings uh, going 360 degrees around an azimuth and 360 degrees around the elevation. So that, that's what what brings you the 720 rows. You can take that file and you can come into the antenna pattern section of your account uh, and you can add new and it's very simple to do because you just give it an antenna name, you set the beam width filter. So uh, when on a beam width filter, uh, the beam width filter does not affect propagation at all and you will see this on other in other locations as well. You'll see it in the coverages. Um, as well uh, whenever you're creating those and, rate, and when you're creating a radio system. Uh, the beam width filter doesn't affect the propagation. It just restricts any EUS submission or end user submission uh, from uh, returning results if it's outside what you set the beam width to. So if you set that to 90 degrees, the beam width filter, uh, if you set the beam width filter to 90 degrees on a 90 degree advertised sector, uh, what's going to happen is, is the side lobes of that antenna or that coverage are not going to be utilized when doing a path analysis or EUS submission. What this does is it, is it prevents uh, one of the, a, a path analysis or EUS submission from, from returning a possible link just because they're in the back feed of a sector. Uh, so it, on a 90 degree sector, if you set those to 115, 120, something like that, uh, that allows you to, if the EUS submission or path analysis is in the side low, but it has a really good signal, it's still going to return that uh, as a result to you. And setting that, that beam width filter when you're adding the antenna, it makes it to where when you select that antenna from the from the drop down list when creating a coverage, it'll automatically pre-fill that field for you. So it just saves you a step whenever you go to create coverages using that antenna that you've uploaded. But then you can set your manufacturer name. And you can choose your, your pattern file and click update and it will add it into your account and then it will appear in the drop down list under your up uploaded antenna patterns when you're creating coverages. After you get your antenna pattern patterns in, uh, the only thing left down here is your payment details, the wiki and the contact us. It's very simple uh, to get a hold of us. Uh, you can 
uh, click your the contact us. You can send us a message right from here. Uh, there is a verification code uh, that uh, it does expire, but if you give us a call, if you have that code, it makes it very simple for us to locate uh, who you are because we can punch that in and you pop right up. Uh, it's much easier for us to help you out if, if you're needing some assistance. Uh, but as I said before, there is the wiki. The wiki has a lot of information on it. Uh, and there, if you uh, if you don't want to go and read the wiki, there's also a tutorial uh, up here that you can turn on. The contents of the tutorial will change uh, through, throughout the tower coverage website. Uh, so that way it, it's displaying the, the, st the stuff that's on the page that you're working on. Once you have all, all of your account settings all done, the next thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to add your tower locations. Uh, you can click on Site, New and it'll take you directly to the site creation page. Or if you just go click on the site, it'll take you to your site's list. And there is also a new site up here. We do have a map view that allows you to view all your sites on a, on a map, just as a bunch of pins. Uh, once your sites are in, you can edit the site right here from, from the list page uh, much faster, or you can actually open them up and it'll take you back, same back to, uh, to the creation page and allow you to update it in this manner as well. Uh, if you're wanting to add a new site, there's several different ways you can do it. Uh, you can drag the map around and find your location. And you can click on the map. And this will allow you to uh, just put the pin wherever your tower location is. And as you can see, the Latin long over here uh, change as, as you move the pin. Uh, you can search for an address in the, in the upper bar. And it will move the pin to your location. Uh, or you can input your latitude and longitude uh, with the decimal degrees or the DMS lat and long. Keep in mind when entering these, the positive and negative values are required uh, in accordance with where you're at in the world. Uh, so the northern, northern hemisphere has a positive latitude, southern hemisphere has a negative latitude, uh, the western hemisphere has a negative longitude, and the eastern hemisphere has a positive longitude and that goes the same as the as with the first uh, box of the DMS lat long uh, so we don't have the the n or w uh, and so forth in the DMS lat long you just have to put a positive or neg negative uh, whatever you need for those uh, your description group uh, description and group boxes uh, are basically just for your record keeping uh, and they they will also the information in the description and group uh, if you put uh, put the pins on your sites whenever you're viewing a multi-map, this information, if you click on the pins in a multi-map, will also display in there as well. Uh, and the description, you can actually put in a URL in here. And by doing that, it will cr actually create that as, as a hyperlink in the, uh, in the info box on the pin window uh, on a multi-map as well. So just a little, little more helpful little tool for you. The other way to uh, add your add your sites is to use the the upload the bulk upload uh, for the sites. There's a download import template. Uh, you click on that and it will download the site template for you, uh, which is right here. Uh, on this site template, uh, there's a several different columns on here, but not all of them are required. Your site name, of course, is required. Your latitude has to be in decimal degrees. It, you cannot put the uh, the DMS lat long in here. Uh, same with your longitude, your description and group, just like on the uh, the actual uh, website page there, you do not have to put anything there. Uh, the height must be in meters. Uh, on that on the website, there, there, there's a uh, conversion, so you can put it in feet and it'll convert it to meters for you. The, the upload will not do that. And then there's a pin type. Uh, as you can see, it says right here at the top, pin type is 1, 2, 3, 4, same order order as represented on the new site page. Uh, so number one is a red pin, number two is a blue pin, number three is an orange pin, number four is a green pin. Uh, you save that as a CSV, you choose your file and you hit import and it will upload all your sites to your account. Once your sites are in your account, then you're going to do one of two things after that. Uh, you can either go straight to creating coverages or you can input a radio system. Uh, by inputting a radio system, it, it essentially allows you to, to create a cookie cutter. Uh, so that way you don't have to put in all the values whenever you're creating coverages. Uh, you, can, you can select your radio system that you created and it will pre-fill a lot of stuff. Uh, so, but there, there are some default ones already in there. 
which makes it a little bit easier. Uh, you can go to coverage at same as sites and hit new coverage here at the top, or you can just hover over it and hit the new button, uh, and it'll take you to the new coverage uh, creation page. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, all of your sites are going to appear in this drop-down list. Uh, so as you can see, we put two example sites uh, in here already. As you, uh, after you select your site, whatever you set the height of the uh, the tower to, it's going to go ahead and pre-fill that as your antenna height, assuming that you're mounting at the top, because it's just going to assume that you mounted at the top of your tower. Uh, you can change this to whatever you like uh, if you're not mounted at the top. So, I mean, we don't have to leave it there. We can change it. The RX threshold is an RSSI reading. It is not RSRP. If this is a 365 coverage, um, you know, want to take into, into account that the, this is the minimum signal requirement for an install in RSSI, not, not RSRP. Um, so you want to put that, that in there, whatever your minimum signal requirement is. Uh, require reliability. This is basically a fudge factor adjustment. This allows you to uh, add or subtract statistical loss to the coverage depending on uh, if, it, if you got a lot of noise, um, whatever the case may be. Uh, if the antenna is getting kind of weak, you can turn, the, turn this up a little bit. Whole, there's a whole bunch of situations where you can adjust this to, to uh, hone your coverage in. So like if you're doing path analysis and all your path analysis are uh, turning up uh, showing a, a hotter signal than what you're seeing out in the field and you know your land cover is already all set up good, come in here and turn your reliability up a little bit so that way more loss is added so that way it brings those projected signals uh, closer. Uh, that way you can get them you know, to that you know, plus or minus one or two dB uh, projected versus reality uh, signals. So that it's just a, a fudge factor adjustment, basically. Use land cover. We do suggest in a WISP situation, you always use the land cover. Otherwise, you're not going to get accurate uh, signal projections. If you turn the use land cover to no, it's essentially representing you going out and removing every single tree from the countryside, um, which uh, I know all of us would like to be able to do that sometimes, but it's not possible. So we do suggest you use it. Uh, use land cover type. This is where the land cover uh, that we created comes into play. If we want to use a standard one or we have different regions, it allows us to be able to set the those uh, that land cover type at which one we want to use for this specific coverage. Uh, use two rays. Uh, this is a good setting to turn on if you're doing LTE, uh, stuff like that. Uh, this uh, takes into consideration multipath reflection. So in L LTE situations, uh, it, it gives you more accuracy if you turn this on. Uh, through, uh, two, four, five, five gig stuff, uh, usually not, not necessary to turn that on. Uh, create view shed. Uh, essentially does the opposite as turning off the land cover. It takes uh, your land cover setting that you selected. It looks at the height setting of all of those, but it ignores your density and it sets all of the density to 10,000 uh, max setting. So this is a situation, if you want to turn this on, uh, this will make it to where pretty much every single uh, area that shows up a as a possible signal is essentially 100% line of sight because it turns all the land cover essentially into a lead plate and unpenetrable by RF. Uh, the LTE coverage checkbox here does not affect the propagation, but it will affect, uh, what it does is allows you to uh, set your channel width over here and then when you do a path analysis from a single coverage instead of displaying the signal in RSSI it will display the signal in RSRP. Uh, RSSI is a lot easier to, is, it's more simple to calculate uh, but the RSRP actually has to have the channel width uh, to, to be able to calculate it accurately. Uh, so that's why that's there. Uh, so that way your path analysis can path analysis can actually show you what, what your client radio is, is going to see uh, on those LTE coverages. Uh, if this checkbox is off, it's going to, you still have to set the, the channel width, uh, but it's going to ignore that and the path analysis will display in RSSI instead of RSRP. Your average client antenna height, you want to make sure that uh, whatever the average around the area, so if you're installing the, this uh, coverage and it, it's going to be pointing at a subdivision of one-story ranch houses, you can set the, the average height uh, four or five meters at the most. If uh, you're going to be installing in a subdivision it's all three-story houses, you can set the, the average to 10, 11 meters, something like that. Uh, depending on where what's in the area. Uh, you want to make sure you get that as, as close as possible. What are your installers going to be doing? Uh, 
uh, because if if this is not accurate, then they go out they go out there and they're all one story houses. But you set it to 12 meters, then they're never going to get the same signal the tower coverage is projecting. Same thing with the client antenna gain. We suggest that 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 you set this to whatever the largest antenna that your installers are going to be using out in the field. Uh, that allows you to see all of your complete your possible coverage area and if a, if a EUS or path analysis comes back and it says you're going to get a neg 40 well you just know you don't have to take as big of an antenna uh, but you want to be able to see all of your possible coverage area by inputting the largest uh, antenna that you use um, for installs off this coverage your RX line loss and your TX line loss um, in general if you have integrated antennas uh, 0 0.5 or 1 it is usually sufficient for pretty much any any situation unless you're installing LMR or something like that uh, if you are you want to make sure you look at the data sheet for that cable that you're you're using all of those cables have a loss per foot calculation on there you want to calculate how how many feet you uh, actually used uh, and calculate that loss and put it in here uh, if you used LMR on both ends you'll You'll want to calculate the RX side and the TX side and put them in accordingly. Uh, you give your coverage a name. We do suggest that you do something that, that is distinguishable. Uh, so that way you know uh, what this coverage is for. So if if this is our support tower and it's the 5 gigahertz, uh, you want to make sure you put that in there. Uh, if you're going to do your coverages one, one at a time, we suggest that you put the dirt direction that it's facing. Um, if you're going to use the coverage array section down here in the bottom right, you don't have to point what put what direction it's facing because uh, it, the coverage array feature is going to do that for you. Uh, as you're as you're filling out, uh, finishing up this coverage, if you decide that you uh, you're putting up four 90 degree sectors, you can simply select a 90 degree sector and as I said before the uploaded antenna patterns uh, show up right down here if uh, if you've uploaded any uh, but we have a lot of different antennas in here but if we decide we're we're doing a four 90 degree sectors and we're going to point them at north south east and west we can leave our azimuth at zero and that's going to set the first coverage at zero degrees uh, which is due north uh, then if you hit your plot coverage array it's going to automatically calculate uh, how many sectors are needed. If you didn't want to do that, if you just wanted to do three, you can change it if you like. And you can tell it whether to do evenly spaced or not. So it, in this situation, uh, the evenly spaced it is kind of irrelevant uh, because we're doing four sectors of 90 degree sectors. So it's they're going to plot a 360 anyway. Uh, but in a situation where we if we did four 65 degree sectors and we started the first one at zero, uh, if we tell it to do do them evenly spaced, it's going to do the exact same thing with a 65 degree sector as it would with a 90 degree sector. It's going to put one at zero, one at 90, one at 180, and one at 270. Uh, if you uncheck this evenly spaced, it's going to take the first one and put it at zero degrees and then it's going to move 65 degrees and put the next one and then move 65. So you will not have a 360 degree array. Uh, it will not evenly space them. It, it, it allows you to, ju to just, uh, so if you had, you know, three 65 degree sectors and the first one at zero, you would cover the, the east side of that tower and there would be no coverage on the west side because it starts and goes around like a clock. Nice, simple, pretty simple to use, uh, you know, especially if, if you, you know, most situations they, uh, uh, most WISP want to, to get 360 coverage unless they're just playing, playing out on a hillside and they're just wanting to cover a valley down below. Totally up to you. Uh, your antenna gain, uh, make sure you, your, your gain and your TX power. Uh, you get those from from your data sheet. Uh, this is not your EIRP. The, this uh, tower coverage calculates that for you. You want the actual gain of the antenna, the actual TX power of the radio, and the actual loss, and that's how the EIRP is calculated. Uh, as I said before, the EUS beamwidth filter, uh, this one is, uh, because it's a 90 degree sector, it defaults to 90, but uh, we would set that to 120, so that way the side lobes of the antenna are used uh, appropriately. Your antenna azimuth, if you don't know what the azimuth, azimuth is, uh, there is a little compass over here on the side. If you uh, type in an azimuth, it will actually point to the direction that that, that azimuth degree is. Uh, it's a very good thing when you're when you have your tower climbers install a, uh, a sector, you find out what direction uh, that that sector is is pointing. Uh, the closer you can get and the more precise uh, readings you can get, the better your tower coverage account is going to be. 
we have a lot of frequencies in here. Uh, everything except for the FM band is in there pretty much. Uh, very, very close to it anyway. If you don't see it in there, you know, send us an email. Let us know. Uh, pretty pretty much any frequency we can uh, we can add in there if uh, if the, the one you want to use is not in there. Uh, as I said before, here's your channel width. Uh, there's several different available channel widths in there, uh, that and that is simply for the RSRP calculation on a single coverage path analysis is all that's used for. It does not affect your coverage. Your exact center frequency, you do not have to put anything in here. You can leave that blank, but it allows you to use the frequency coordination feature of the multi-coverage. And once again, here's your TX power, and this is in DBM. Your rendering quality, if you're just creating your account, you, you can set this on low resolution, so that way they process faster, so that way you can see what, what it kind of is going to look like, and then once you get it honed in, uh, then you can go back in and process it on high or very high, uh, so that, that way, and then, you know, once you get them all, all sent into the processing, you know, go get you a drink or something like that. Uh, your strong signal margin, that is, that is the difference, uh, the, the split point between the strong signal color and the weak signal color. Uh, as we move this slider, uh, you can see the, the signals down here are changing. So the strong signal color is on the top, the weak signal color is on the bottom. Uh, so the, the default is, uh, is green and red. You can change these on a, on a single coverage, uh, but once they go into a multi-map, they are going to default back to light green and dark green on, a, on your multi-coverages. Uh, so it is totally up to you if you want to change them or not. Uh, you know, some people do just because they, they don't like the red because they think that's no service. Uh, totally up to you though. Uh, but it, the, this slider uses your RX threshold over here from the system settings and it determines, uh, your, <clears throat> excuse me, it determines where, where green and where red is, as you can see. So any, anything greater than an X61 is going to be green. Anything between a X61 and X70 is going to be a red color. Uh, your opacity is simply what it says is the how light or dark uh, the coverage is. If you set this to 100%, uh, you will not be able to see the the roads and houses through the color of the coverage. Uh, if you set it to zero, you'll barely be able to see it at all. So totally up to you, depending on how good your eyes are. Uh, maximum range, we do recommend that you that you leave this up at at, at least 20 kilometers, it, uh, just because of rendering quality. Uh, if you get it down lower, uh, it'll it'll start. It won't uh, render. Um, the resolution it will will get down there so low that it, it won't be as good of quality. But if you want it to cut off at a certain point, the coverage to cut off at you know five kilometers, ten kilometers out, you can do so. It'll it'll stop the coverage from propagating as soon as it gets out there. Uh, you are able to turn it all the way up to seventy if you like. Uh, that will not create coverage out to seventy kilometers. The the maximum is thirty kilometers uh, for coverage propagation. But what this allows is for the path analysis and an EUS submission to happen up to seventy kilometers out. Uh, so it, even there will be some situations if you have a really powerful radio that it will stop at thirty, but you can drop a pin outside of the thirty and still get a good signal. Uh, reading to it that that's it allows it to to for the EUS and the path analysis to happen Once you've got it all all filled out you simply click, click create and it, it will create the uh, the coverage in your in your tower coverage account uh, We did create uh, I pre-created some in here as well as you see it'll take us back here but while those are processing we can go ahead and take a look at uh, one of these other coverages that we already created and we utilize the coverage array, so it has the same uh, naming convention going on here. So as you can see, uh, this is our uh, 365 30 degrees, so it's pointing at 30 degrees uh, on, on an azimuth, and it has all of our settings in here. We can change any of the settings uh, at any time and just simply click the update coverage down here. This is an LTE coverage, uh, so so that way you can see this feature in action. So if we sit here and come and drop a pin, uh, we have a couple different options. We can either click the path analysis down here, and this allows us to adjust uh, the install height. Uh, if we want to save this as a link, um, you can give it a name and give it a site name, and it will take that pin location, and it'll create a new site in your account, and it'll produce a link uh, that you can go and edit and change at any time. Uh, or you can change your install height if the customer calls and says, well, I have a 40-foot tower in my backyard. Uh, you can do so. You can uh, put the 40-foot in here, and it'll adjust it, uh, and you can tell it don't save if you if you just want to see what the what the projection would be. And as you can see, 
this uh, this customer location is now at 12 meters high and has a projected RSRP of neg 103.7 and according to our coverage settings which is a good so neg 118 is the RSRP threshold based on a neg 85 RX threshold RSI RSSI setting as you can see once you have all of your RF coverages in, then you can create your fiber coverages. Fiber coverages are also very, very easy and very simple to create. We have one already in here. Uh, you can, we'll open this one up and just go ahead and view it. Since it's essentially the same to create one. Uh, this fiber coverage, we just ran up the highway here, just did a real quick one. Uh, the on the fiber coverages, uh, you want to set your name something identify identifying so that way you know what what this section of fiber is. Uh, the distance allowed, so basically whatever the from the center line, how far uh, you want to receive uh, EUS results uh, from that fiber line. Uh, the strand count, the color, uh, any notes you want, uh, the mode selection, the type selection, all that is just for your uh, your record keeping. Uh, you can come back and edit these if you if you wish. Uh, so this year we uh, just kind of started clicking the map and started adding points. You can have up to 25 points or 70 kilometers. Uh, if you get to if you reach either one of those thresholds, you can simply just start where you left off and create another another fiber coverage and keep going. Once you have all your fiber coverages and your RF coverages put in, uh, you can create your links. Uh, links are very simple to create as well. You can either go to the coverage, uh, as I showed you before, and just start creating links in that method, uh, uh, just so that way you don't have to keep uh, keep doing the same same site over and over again. Or you can come in here and you can create a new link. Uh, the new link it generally is going to start the the page right uh, where wherever your company profile ha has your uh, your address at if it's able to be geocoded and you can come in here and you can select uh, site number one and site number two and it's going to try to create that uh, that line for you to to show you you can use one of your radio systems uh, or one of the defaults that are already in here uh, so that way it pre populates this uh, all the values that you see in link creation are going to uh, are going to be this, essentially the same stuff that you're going to see in coverage creation. The only major difference is that a uh, on a point to point link, it assumes proper antenna alignment, so there is no antenna pattern required because we assume that you're going to, going to align your antennas uh, correctly. But once you do that, then you can simply create your link. Is that one? Oh, I didn't set the settings on that one, but I already created this one for you. And then once you have uh, your link created, uh, then it's actually going to give you the uh, the actual path profile of this. There's a lot of different information in here. Uh, you have your the tilt on both sides. So as you can see down here in the uh, bottom right corner, uh, there is the uh, one of them has an up tilt. Uh, it's a positive value. So one side, the house spring side, is a up tilt of uh, 0.16 degrees and the LTI side is a down tilt uh, in accordance with our settings that we have in here is going to be a down tilt of 0.32 degrees so barely any uh, but just a little bit uh, it also gives you your uh, ground elevation uh, the lat and long of each location uh, you get your RX sensitivity and what your projected signal of this link would be uh, is down here there's also the Google Earth flyby uh, download this allows you to download the point to point of this and take that uh, that Google Earth uh, KML put it into your uh, into Google Earth and if you have 3d imagery available uh, in your area uh, this will allow you to actually see if the line uh, actually goes through some of that those 3d objects uh, that that are available on Google Earth uh, but that only works as I mentioned it it only works if you have 3d imagery available in your area and it's it's getting more and more so but it's not 100% uh, of the US or, uh, at this time. Once you have all your links, uh, you can create all your backbone links if you like, uh, all your point to points that are happening throughout your network, then you can create your link groups. Uh, take your all of your links and put them into a link group. Uh, you can make uh, as many link groups as you like, but this will allow you to view these from, view all of your links from a multi-map as well, so that way you don't have to go in and find them individually. Once you have all of those created, then you can, that's when uh, the, the really important part happens is you can create a multi-map.
Creating a multi-map is very simple to do. Uh, it's much easier than creating a coverage or fiber coverages because it's just collecting all the data together at this point. Uh, they process much faster too because of that. It's just collecting data that's already been generated at that point. Uh, so what you can do is you can hit check all if you're wanting to make a, a massive map and hit add selected. As you can see, it pulls them all over here. If you change your mind and you didn't want that one in there, you can just move it back out again. Uh, you'll give it a name, uh, something identifying. Uh, place pins on sites, as, as I stated before, this allows you to actually see the tower pins on your location. Uh, the tower pins will not display if when you uh, integrate into your website, so you don't have to worry about uh, your customers seeing your tower locations. This is only a inside tower coverage viewable pin display, uh, so don't, you don't have to worry about that. Uh, so you, you can put the pins on your site so that way uh, your your team can see the tower locations. If you put description and group and stuff in those in those tower locations, uh, you know, like put what the tower's maximum up and down is, so that way whenever your sales team is looking at the map, they can click on the pin and uh, see what the that stuff is. Whatever you want to do, uh, however you want to do that. The U.S. Data Collection Form. This tells uh, the the map whether. Uh, when the iframe for the map is called, whether to send the form uh, to the to the iframe or to send just the visible map, and then display fiber on iframe. Uh, this tells also tells the iframe whether to send the polygons of of your fiber display, your fiber runs as well. You can set your zoom level. Uh, the the further to the right you you set this, the the closer to the ground it's going to be. The further to the left you set it, uh, the the more uh, more world view it's going to be. And then once you've done all that, you simply create the new multi-map at the bottom and it'll process your multi-map. But since we already created both of them, I created one with data collection on and one with data collection off, just so that way we can show you. We'll look at the data collection on map first. So as you can see, all of your settings uh, are also available in here. You've got your display pins, uh, data collection, display fiber, and your public map. Uh, you're allowed to have up to three public maps, uh, but these little toggle switches, they, they automatically update your map. You don't have to reprocess them or reprocess the map or anything. If you, uh, if you click on the, this data collection map and then close the map, uh, if you click on it and turn it off, it's automatically, you know, it, it'll automatically just be a display map. Uh, within a few seconds on your website. Uh, same thing with your display display pins. Uh, if you turn this off and then refresh the page, it, the pins will go away at all. You don't have to reprocess the map. Uh, if you're wanting to change your coverages or anything, uh, the little update settings here at the top allows you to come in here. The ones on the right are the ones that are in your map. Uh, as you can see, coverage count currently in this map is six. Uh, and then uh, you can you can see the ones that are not in your map. Uh, very simple, you click on them and it'll put them over on the right and hit update map and it'll add it to the map uh, and then reprocess or you can take them back out again. Very, very simple to do. Uh, we also have the bulk update included coverages right here. Uh, so what this will do, it'll take all the coverages are in, that are in the right hand pane and it will take and pull those into our bulk coverage update feature. As you can see here, so it pulled them all in here and it gives you a little thumbnail. If you change your mind and you decide you didn't want to didn't want to change one of these, you just click the little X. It'll go away and then you're left with the ones here. Uh, the this right hand pane over here, you can see that these are all the settings of uh, of the coverage. The same same thing as you see when you're creating coverages. Uh, if you're just wanting to change the antenna gain, you can click the uh, on off button on the left. Uh, that makes it to where only the antenna gain is going to be affected when I click this update coverage button. So what it's going to do is going to take all four of these coverages, whatever their current setting is, it's going to leave it alone, except for the antenna gain, it's going to set it to whatever I put, the, put in this value over here and reprocess them all. Keep in mind, if you're using this, it does utilize API calls off your account, as it warns here. It tells you how many you have available on your account and how many you've already used. Uh, so you want to keep an eye on that if uh, if you're not want if you especially if you're using the uh, uh, API version of the website integration, because you don't want to run out of API calls uh, before the first of the month. Uh, API calls reset at midnight Central Time on the first of the month every month. So keep that in mind if you're using this that feature. But it is very handy for for making uh, mass changes if you change. Uh, your land cover settings, you, or you make an adjustment to your land cover, and you just you don't want to go in and reprocess them all at once. You can uh, go in and uh, do that this way as well. Uh, the you can 
access this feature the same by just going to your coverage list, uh, checking the ones you want and hitting the update, update checked, uh, it will essentially take you to the exact same page. Makes it very simple for updating uh, in a bulk fashion. But we'll go back to our map here. Uh, there's a lot of different features available on, on the multi-map as well. So as, as I've mentioned many times already, the website integration, uh, it is accessible uh, from the multi-map. Uh, there's the test iframe button up there. It's going to pop up the form. This is a data collection map. So the data collection map shows the form. This is, is the iframe version of the form. Uh, you can't really change a whole lot on this, uh, but keep in mind when you integrate the, uh, the iframe into your multi-map, uh, if you put the put the iframe in uh, in some kind of in a the parent div, it, it will inherit uh, quite a bit. Uh, you know some of the font, uh, the background color, it'll it'll inherit those things. Um, if you if you stretch it out, uh, you know if you have it full width of your, of your page, it's going to be stretched full width of your page. Uh, it it'll try to try to compensate, uh, and it'll try to adjust itself the best it best it can. Uh, but it uh, it uh, it adjusting the parent div is, is the best way you know shrink it down a little bit um, or stretch it out if you like uh, wh whichever uh, but it, it'll adjust a little bit but this is not a customizable form if you want customizable uh, you're more than welcome to use the API version and the uh, the EUS template generator is, is a very easy way uh, to get started using that API version because then it's completely customizable and you can make it as beautiful as you like and match your match your uh, website uh, perfectly uh, by utilizing our API it's, the APIs are very powerful. We also have the pre-qualification API that you can integrate into that, uh, so you get instant responses of yes or no whether they're in the in the coverage area. Uh, but if you're uh, if you're utilizing, um, you know, go ahead and do the visible map as well, so you can see that. So the test iframe on on the visible map. So because the data collection is off on this one, as you can see, this is what they would see, uh, your customers would see. We have the fiber is on and the data collection is off. So now we see the RF coverages and we see uh, our fiber route that, that we placed into this multi-map as well. Uh, you can order the files uh, from your multi-map. Uh, you can get your KML uh, shape files. You can get your FCC form 477. Uh, data deployment data files. Uh, this is just the files. You get a text file with all the uh, all the 15 digit block codes and you get uh, your shape files. These Google Earth shape files are also included in the deployment data uh, order for the uh, for the files as well. Uh, so it's really handy. If you have fiber maps uh, included in this multi map, there will be a second text file that will say fiber blocks. Uh, so that way you get the block IDs for your fiber as well. Uh, your fixed broadband subscription, you can uh, order that right from here, or you can get your marketing address list, uh, which is very handy as well. Uh, essentially what that does is it takes your coverage map uh, that you have right here, takes your coverage map, and it gives you all of the physical, if, uh, if a physical address is available uh, in, in your coverage area, uh, so any address that falls within the green, uh, it's going to give you the address, uh, uh, gonna give you a lot of data actually, the parcel ID, uh, the if the market, about any, any of the things that are available, market value, house size, physical address, mailing address, uh, owner's name, phone number, that all that type stuff. If the county reported it, uh, and we have access to it, we're going to give it to you. Uh, you you can just, uh, you can get the count from any address list that, or any map that you would like. Uh, if you if you go and you order the order the address list, uh, the first thing that's going to happen is going to get a count. It doesn't charge you anything. It doesn't even ask you for any payment just to get the address count. So like if it, on that map, for example, the all data collection map, uh, we processed that map and it was very huge. So we have over 13,000 available addresses and you, you can see what your return on investment would be on purchasing those addresses as well. And they're, they're 10 cents a piece for the address, so it's not bad. You can sit there and create a coverage map and set your, your um, RX threshold down to a neg 50 and order the addresses and get only the addresses of people who have an amazing signal. Uh, so that way it chops that that. Uh, that number way down. So it, it's there's a whole lot of powerful things that you can do with those address lists and, and allows you to uh, to market just to people you know that you can get service to. But once you uh, once you integrate into your website, uh, that allows you to start collecting your end user submission data. Uh, by every time a customer fills out the EUS form on your website, what it's going to do is it's going to send uh, their their location 
uh, back to uh, your tower coverage account. And it's going to check all of your coverages and it's going to give you the six best possible links uh, to that customer location. So as you can see, we got a bunch of them in here that, that we just put in just for testing purposes. And this one right here is like just on, on the outside fringe. And if we click on that, we can see that the signal is, is not a very good signal here. So it, it's not, not really good. And if we view the details of it, There we go. Uh, so we view the details. We can see that our, our pen is just outside. We've already changed it to a no service because we can see that this says link not possible. Uh, and the reason appears to be because it's behind a big line of trees. Uh, if this customer uh, would have happened to to fall in in uh, one of the fiber maps, it would uh, it would list the uh, the name of the fiber here. Uh, but this is all the information that they filled out. You're going to receive this in a an email as well. Uh, the, this email is going to give you the six best possible links. Uh, so the, if, they're, if they are possible to hit more than one sector, it's going to tell you what the projected signal is to the six best possible ones. And then also, if you have your billing system integration set up, it will also push that data into your billing system. So as you can see here, we've got our data. Get something going on here. Sorry about that. Hmm, not sure what the what's going on with that here. But anyway, uh, if you have your EUS, uh, your your billing system information in here, it's going to take that. There we go. It's going to take that uh, uh, all that EUS data and it's going to push it into your billing system. Uh, so depending on what uh, your billing system is. Uh, what they do with the data. We push the data the same to all of the billing system. It just all depends on what they do with it uh, as to whether they they create a trouble ticket, create an account, um, whatever whatever they do with the signal readings. Uh, we, we push all that data. Uh, just a matter of what they want to do with it. And then the after you uh, after you collect all that data, you can view that view it all from from your multi map. So and one if you change all of those as they come through, uh, it makes it to where you can keep track of these. So now once we have all of these no service or our signal possible, see the signal possible ones, our installers or our sales team know that you know we need to give them a call. Uh, if it's yellow, we know that that uh, it came in over over the night because they all come in as a as a yellow pin. Or if it's no service. We can go into our EUS data, and we can view the view these. Uh, we can do an advanced search. Uh, we can just search for our no service pin types. Makes it uh, very handy to be able to just narrow it down to them. Uh, and then six months down the road, if our if uh, our we're not getting that many leads, uh, we can go back and we can create that that uh, save search out of out of those. So we have one in here uh, called no service. Uh, so we can we can view those uh, or we can take those and submit those to a best tower location. So the one that I have in here in the, as an example, I just submitted a all the customers into it. And what this is going to do, it's going to do a reverse path analysis and it's a lot going to allow you uh, to see where the best location to put up a tower would be. Uh, so you can view those just by clicking on it and it's going to open up and it's going to give you a map. And this map is going to give you a heat map. Uh, essentially, what this does is it checked all of these locations and it found the the spot where it could hit the most of, of those, those customer locations. And as you can see, it's also popping. The orange dots are starting to populate as well. Uh, so what that's doing is calling the FCC ASR database. Uh, and it's showing us where all of the FCC registered towers are uh, that are over 200 foot tall uh, in the uh, in the area are. Uh, makes it to where we can simply just find uh, one of the, the hotter spots and click on it and we can go and view the uh, FCC ASR actual registration for that tower and find the address and the contact information and everything on how we can get some space on that tower as well. Uh, because we know if we went and put the tower up there using the uh, the settings that, that we provided, uh, that we would most likely be able to get most, if not all, of those customers that we couldn't get before. Very powerful little tool. 
And then you can also view that from the uh, from the multi coverage as well, just by clicking the ASR tower uh, down here at the bottom. It'll populate the same orange little dots uh, and allow you to view that as well. Uh, or you can do a path analysis from the uh, if you don't want to submit an EUS submission into uh, into your uh, actual uh, data, you just want to check a location. Uh, you can come in here and drop a pin and click path analysis, and this gives you the option to use the coverage settings, or you can set a custom height. And if you don't want to mess with this, uh, it, even easier, just drop a pin and double click on the uh, pin, and it will give you a uh, give you a spot to uh, just see what the signal would be to uh, to that location. Right. And with that, that basically covers um, all of our all of our getting started uh, setup uh, setup stuff. Uh, so we'll uh, take a look and see if there's any questions that uh, that weren't answered or we didn't already cover here. Uh, but if you, like I said before, if you have any questions, please put them in the coverage box. Uh, so that that way you can uh, we can answer them. If you can't think of it today, uh, like I uh, stated before, you can contact us with the contact us uh, form right here. Uh, give us a call. Uh, or shoot us an email, support at towercoverage.com. Uh, there's many answers to many questions on the Tower Coverage Wiki and also the tutorial that, that is accessible as well. But I'll go ahead and uh, let's see here, look and see if there's any questions here that we need to answer. Uh, but other than that, if you can't think of anything, thank you for coming. Uh, see uh what about moving moving pins here all right the uh your default your pin pin for public maps uh is based on the geographic center of the of the multi coverage uh for the public multi maps uh for your um for your account in general, uh, whether it be sites or links or stuff like that, that's based on the geographic location of your business address and the company profile. Uh, another question: Where do I put credit card for payment? Uh, if the if you're trying to upgrade to upgrade an account, uh, if you're a, a current account. Uh, with a subscription on our, if you've had one for a long time, uh, you're probably on our old process. Uh, it, if you want to give me give me a call after after we're done, I can, I can help you better with that. Uh, there's a couple different scenarios. If you're on a really old old payment process, you have to cancel your uh, 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 subscription in your PayPal. If you're on our new newer PayPal process, you can simply come to this manage subscription page and click the cancel button, uh, and then after you after you cancel, uh, then the sign up will be available again, and uh, by clicking the sign up, uh, it'll it's now the credit card it, uh, process is now available uh, on Tower Coverage. So it, it just depends on what your current status is, but I can take a look at yours afterwards and uh, give you a better answer. I can't really answer completely without looking at your account specifically. How does the land land coverage know where the zones are? Okay, so the uh, the actual like different uh, different areas, it, the uh, the USGS uh, clutter data it it determines um, what is in each specific area and labels them uh, accordingly. You can view those from from a coverage or a multi coverage. Uh, so if you go to your map data and click land cover down at the bottom, you might have to turn your opacity up a little bit so that way you can see them because they're kind of light when they load but as you can see we can slide the opacity and see what land cover is actually being used in in any given area and this is assigned uh, by the USGS so you can see all the different colors the same colors that you see in the uh, uh, in the land cover settings uh, are directly uh, related here as well uh, so you like the pink is the cropland light blue is the uh, low urban buildup uh, dark greens your evergreens so on and so forth as, as it goes
Uh, oh, tilt. Uh, on on the tilt, any any of the tilt settings. Uh, so anywhere you see tilt uh, within tower coverage, the uh, the tilt is going to be a positive number for up tilt, a negative number for down tilt. Uh, on your if you're using a uh, one of the manufacturer uh, antennas that are in in tower coverage, so we have a bunch of them in here. If uh, if it's in the manufacturer list, then all electrical tilt was already considered. Uh, so do not put any tilt uh, when creating coverages or anything like that. Uh, if the if it's a manufacturer antenna, they've already considered all tilt, uh, electrical tilt. It's uh, mechanical tilt only. And if nobody else has any questions, like I said, if you if you couldn't think of it now, you think of it later, uh, please send us an email, give us a call. We'd be happy to help you. Uh, but with that, uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, stop the uh, stop the webinar for now. And uh, thank you guys all all for. Oh, sorry. Uh, the mechanic. Uh, how is mechanical tilt calculated? So the your mechanical your mechanical tilt. Uh, the all the antenna patterns. Uh, they're three D antenna patterns. So so the three dimensional antenna pattern. Uh, it has the elevation. Uh, the the elevation readings uh, in the pattern as well. Uh, your mechanical tilt is, is the physical tilt of your sector. So if your if your sector is is pointing straight uh, straight out at the horizon and you know is perfectly level. Uh, uh, with the ground, then it's zero zero mechanical tilt. If it you know if it if it's the top of the antenna is is you know forward a little bit, then you're going to have down tilt. Uh, depend you know whatever whatever uh, that that reading is uh, with you know like a compass or a protractor or whatever. Uh, you can you can use use that to to judge the mechanical tilt in degrees of the down tilt or up tilt, whatever the case may be. All right. If you're so the the tilt uh oh the the tilt in like a path analysis uh it go it goes uh based it it correct it, it's based upon you know how far they are uh the relation their relationship to the face of the sector so the the height of the height of the sector the height of the customer uh versus versus their distance is how it would calculate the the tilt and it does also it calculates out the uh with the cur curve of the earth as well uh, so that that tilt is also considered or that that reading is also considered whenever the tilt is calculated in a path analysis or a link. So 